Without a vision, the people perish. Welcome to Vision Plus, a program featuring a positive outlook, dealing with everyday situations of marriage, children, and business. Believing Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Teacher, author, speaker, delighting audiences from New York to Sacramento with a hardened message for the people today. Bonnie would like to remind you of the 800 number on the screen. Please feel free to call at any time throughout the broadcast and share your concerns. Leave your prayer request and someone will pray with you. And now, teacher, author, and speaker, Bonnie Lippard. You're watching Vision Plus. I'm Bonnie Lippard, and with me is Greg Poss. I am excited about what he has committed some of his, I would say, all of his spare time to doing, and you'll get to meet him in just a moment. He is a person that works at the Marriott in Huntsville, Alabama. Of course, this goes out on uh, Big Bam TV and other places other than Alabama and YouTube, but he is here uh, with a very special passion of his life. And if you know anyone that has someone that ha possibly has autism or any kind of, uh, I will call it birth defects or effects that uh, uh, affects the child, the children in the family, you may want to call them up and tell them to listen to Greg Poss and uh, possibly even get the DVD from this program, Vision Plus. You will see a toll-free number running at the bottom of the screen and you can call that to get additional information or one of the DVDs and I do want to remind you that we have some books this one is called a survivor secret and also uh, mission possible the part of the National Speakers Association some of these people you may have heard of of course Jack Canfield who's one of our members that's in mission possible along with myself and uh, other people uh, he is one that, along with Mark, I had put together Chicken Soup for the Soul series. They own that. And Bruce Jenner, who was a uh, Olympic a gold medalist uh, a few years ago. And Tim Sanders, one of the Yo uh, um, author and chief solutions for Yahoo. Started to call him a yo-yo. No, no. He's very wealthy and very fine young man. And Kevin Saunders, a lot of you have heard of him and saw the movie um, he's in a wheelchair, and he's an example to everyone, as Greg Poss is. And Greg, first of all, I want you to tell us a little bit about yourself. Are you a Huntsvillian? Where were you born? And I was actually born in uh, a little town in Tennessee called Lawrenceburg, Tennessee. Um, I lived in Athens for a few years, but now I do reside in Huntsville. Um, I do work at the Marriott by the Space Center, which is a great job, great opportunity. And they've afforded me the opportunity to be able to do autism um, through my own personal passion. And how did that get started? You know you're going to tell me that. Look at me. It, well, how'd you get started? I, it actually got started when um, a, fr a friend and I went to Paris, France. And the first time that I had ever saw a child with autism was when I was there. And he was standing by the waterfall and he was just staring and try drawing a picture and he, he couldn't speak, he, no movements that he did and he just started randomly screaming. Tried, I tried to help this child, didn't know what was going on. So his mom finally come and told us that he had had autism. So I really, it, you know, it really upset me and I thought, what, what can I do as an American to ensure that our children that does have autism can live a better life? So with that, I got started with the National Autis Autism Society, um, NSA.org, NSA and they've afforded me to be able to uh, come to a lot of their meetings and to see what a typical child's life that has autism is about, which is just a horrible life, but you know they manage, they get by with it. And I know of two people in, not my immediate family, but friends of, of the family do have autism, and it's very sad it's a very sad life to live so my passion is to be able to help these children 
to not necessarily get rid of autism if there was, you know, it's like AIDS and cancer, there's no cure for it. Um, but I would love to be able to at least minimize the effects of autism and give these children a better life. Mm -hmm. I have two, a friend that I've known for 18 or 19 years anyway, this, uh, her child has autism and she, ha she is one of the sweetest people in the world and her, uh, her son is, it's a real challenge because, uh, she may not know where he is, and, but he's been able to. He's a grown now, you know, right. 20, whatever. And he keeps down a job as a, in a restaurant, washing dishes, right. and, but he can actually work. He can talk, um, and she's been able to deal with it. She said she looks at alternative medicine. She looks at medicine. She looks at... Her biggest thing is prayer, just right. believe in God. Then we went to my brother-in-law's funeral in Pennsylvania, and lo and behold, one of the children that, in fact, we tried to, uh, to adopt her, and she now is grown and has a son who's 15 with autism, and he, uh, the whole time he, we were there, he was very, just walking, 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 walking. Right. And uh, it's... Some I have heard, I interviewed one time a person been a little while ago, and her son didn't, the first thing they noticed was that he didn't allow, didn't want them to hug him. Right. And they're, so tell me what you know about the ones that you do know about. They're Greg. very, children that have autism, they're very independent uh, children. They like to do things on their, on their own. Um, the attention, they do want attention. But as far as hug hugging and kissing and all that, they're not very affectionate. Um, they try to stay to themselves as much as possible. Um, uh, some of the signs of autism is you can see them randomly hitting on things or um, staring or tapping, something to get someone's attention, um, or just kind of screaming in their own little, little tone. Um, it's just that they, the big crowds, the, the attention, scares them. I know I was in Walmart a, a few weeks ago or a few months ago and I saw this child that paid for Code Adam over their uh, PA system and it was an autistic child that had gotten lost and his mom was panicking. So they went all throughout the store looking for him. They didn't find the child but another uh, get, uh, customer saw him in hiding in a clothes rack and it's just because big stores, big crowds, things like that scare these children. So they go running. You know, they try to find a place to hide to get to themselves. Mm -hmm. So it's just, you know, we have to make these children's lives better because statistics are that 64% of America's children by the year 2010 will have autism. Wow, that's a high percentage. Now, you had some additional experiences. Were you actually watching a television show or heard about it? I was. It was the Oprah Winfrey show. Um, uh, a few months a few months back, I want to say in early January, um, she had done a whole week-long special on children's autism and the tremendous amount of affection and care that Oprah had for these children just really amazed me. So she did a, she did a study to try to find out um, about autism. She took normal children and put them in a room with uh, autistic children and the effects were very different the the play styles were very different their everything was just was just different their eating habits sleeping habits everything was different um, with this test that she did so she actually um, Oprah started the recent campaign to raise money for autism and she on her website oprah.com you can go in you can donate money you can go to the national autistic society to donate money but oprah uh made a pledge that if she can if uh she can get one solid um company or organization to donate two hundred thousand dollars she will match that so that'll be about four hundred thousand dollars that the national autistic society will have um government funding for autism they don't have 
they're, so it's independent funding that they have to go out and raise by donations by people. So they have uh, walks like, re, you know, Relay for Life for Cancer has walks. So they have autism, autism walks. They have little ribbons that you can get, that you can purchase. They have keychains, various things that they have um, to purchase. But Oprah is a, is a stellar woman. She just, you know, she pas she's passionate as well about autism. And if you get a chance, you can see her video clip on, on Oprah.com. Yeah, and also we're going to have that later yes. in this program. Uh, at the, toward the end of the program, we're going to actually show it. What, since I haven't seen it, tell me what it shows, it Greg. Just, uh, it just shows Oprah, and she, she has two children sitting beside her, two auti autistic children sitting beside her. Um, she tries to talk to them, and it just shows how they have no idea, you know, what she is saying. They also have, um, she also is showing, has, has snacks for them, toys, how their play styles vary. Um, then she brings in two normal speaking children and shows their play style. So she kind of gives you an example of what happens. And then she, she talks about her own personal experience with autism, about how um, one, of her, uh, one of her nieces, I believe it is, her cousins, has autism. So she, that's why she's very passionate about autism. And, you know, the, the funding and the, the prestige of her allows autism to go further because of who Oprah is. In fact, she's coming to the Alabama area uh, this year of 2007. And what is her objective here? She is, she's coming to Birmingham, to the Birmingham Jefferson Civic Center, June 28th through the 30th, um, to kind of make Alabamians and other people in the surrounding area aware of autism because uh, statistics are that Alabama and the southern states have a higher percentage of autistic children than any of the other states. Do you have any idea why that's true or how it happened? I, what is it in the South that causes <laughs> autistic children? Because it's I, nothing the parents do. No. I know the one I know, they have a perfectly normal, brilliant, she's an attorney, the sister that's uh, of this autistic child, and so, uh, do you, is there anything to show what causes it? There isn't, uh, that I know of. I'm actually trying to do research on that to find out why, um, Al or the southern states is more prone to autism. Um, people have said it's because of, we have these cotton fields, we have all these, uh, poisonous things that they spray on our plants. They have, you know, everything. But I, <coughs> I really don't know if that's an effect on it, but. You know, Ala the southern states have always been kind of blamed for everything, so I don't know. I don't know if that's the Los case. Los Angeles <laughs> has its smog, <laughs> right. so. And now wildfires, you know. <laughs> yes, so. and in Georgia, in fact, there um, was uh, some of the smog was coming into Alabama recently right. because of the wildfires, too. Right. Uh, what are some of the things that research is hoping to achieve by this? Research with the National Autistic Society, they're hoping to be able to either come up with what causes autism and hopefully go in there and do some kind of surgery to stop it. They're also hoping to come up with a uh, some kind of drug or pill, kind of like Ritalin, to be able to keep these children from being so aggressive, so, um, you know, independent. They're, they're wanting them to become like a, a normal child because an autistic child, if they're fully autistic, cannot go to a normal public school. They have to have special schooling because of who, the, of you know how they are, which is sad. They don't get a normal life. So research is hopefully, um, and then you know technology has gone tr tremendous. It, it's amazing. So hopefully research can get that, you know, to that point to where they can find out what causes autism and hopefully minimize it or completely do away with it. It's one of those mystery you know, diseases that they don't know where it comes from. So hopefully in the, ne in the near 10, 20 years, we can, you know, know what causes it and where it, how to get rid of it. Now, you're a young man, single man, bachelor, girls, and not that he said I had to put an ad in the paper to let you know he's a bachelor, but now how in the world, in addition to seeing this person in France, Paris, France, that had autism, how... How can you spend so many hours uh, with this? You've got a passion that's unbelievable. <laughs> well, between working between working full time as I do at the Marriott and, and, school. and attending Virginia College, um, 
I set aside a certain time. I usually don't get in bed until usually 12.30 or 1 in the morning due to the fact I'm emailing, I'm sending out things with autism. I keep an updated uh, look at their website, and I go to a lot of their meetings. I take time off from work to be able to attend their meetings. And I also do, uh, each time I get paid, I do see, send a percentage of my check to the National Autism Society. Pretty heavy Society. percentage, $250 um, every two weeks to or be able something to, like that. To support them. That's uh, 500 a month. <laughs> that's right. That's a house payment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, uh, your parents live in this area? My parents live in the Athens area. Um, they both are just amazed at me being 24 years old of what I you know, what I've accomplished in my life. I've ser I have served a year and a half in Iraq. I was in the military for four years. Served a year and a half in Iraq. And I saw a lot of things over there that really made me mature a lot and made me focus on what a blessing it is to live in America in such a country that we live in, you know. And I saw these children, and it just makes me think, you know, I can't, what can I do to help these children? Because, you know, People with cancer, yeah, I feel sorry for them. People with AIDS, I feel sorry for them. But that's – typically people with cancer are older, have lived – you know, lived a lot of their lives. Children ha are just up and coming in the world. They're the ones that are going to be the next generation coming up. So we as Americans need to focus on them and make sure that they do have a good, you know, productive life. Mm -hmm. And children with autism, I don't feel will ever be able to experience that. They won't know what it is like to live a true American life. Now, you mentioned it, so I have to ask you, what is your opinion, and like I tell everybody in, that I teach, uh, everybody's entitled to my perfect opinion, so they are yours also. What's your opinion about our war in Iraq, and why do you, uh, what do you think we should to do what's your personal mm -hmm. opinion not that that's a spokesman for the military but my personal opinion as being over there i feel as when we first went when when we were attacked september 11th it really upset me and i felt like we needed to go after the people that did this to our country then so i totally agreed with going to afghanistan going into iraq and i was very pleased when we captured saddam hussein um thing that I'm disappointed about is us spending all this money, these troops getting killed each and every day, and it really doesn't seem like there's going to be a timetable to bring these troops home. I feel like we've done our job in Iraq. We need to pull those troops out and not, you know, not keep 270,000 troops on the ground over there, you know, bring some home. And then the main focus of this war was to go after Osama bin Laden because he was the, the mastermind behind September 11th. It seems like our attention totally changed from Afghanistan and bin Laden and went to Iraq. Not sure why that is. A lot of people have their own opinions about why that is, but I feel like that we spent enough money, we done our job, we set out to do what we were going to do in getting Saddam Hussein, and we did. And if you were called back again, one of the other students that had been in Iraq said he doesn't agree with the direction. But if he were called today, I he would go, go in a heartbeat. Yeah, it's my. This is my country, and I'll do what I have to do to to, to defend my country. Well, our uh, cameraman over there is Tony Libhart from the Marine Corps, and he's had, uh, and I had a brother in the Air Force. He's had a brother in the Army or Air Force. Two in the Army and one in the Air Force. I had one in the Air Force, one in the Merchant Marine. We've covered all of the – he used to tell me that the Marines were – that the Navy was a division of the Marines. He – and I won't go into what all he said, the men's department. Anyway, we had a lot of fun about that. But they all – all of our families always believed in supporting our country, right. whatever it takes. And for you, it's not only that you served in Iraq and you'd go back in a heartbeat even though you don't like the direction it's going right now. Right. I'd like to bring the guys home, so would I, and girls. Uh, but we have to, uh, what we're going to do now, Greg, is we are going to go to the uh, excerpt that you have, the 10 okay. minutes from the Oprah show, and uh, we would like to encourage each one of you, if you have uh, 
a feeling that you'd like to help also in finding an answer. Tony and I served, well, Tony was the board member on the John T. Gray School, which was for cerebral palsy, and they are doing a lot for birth defects. And, but this is one that's, that's the mystery. To hear about the mystery and the secret, this is the mystery. We haven't figured this out yet. And of course, it's just like, I think of it as like electricity. Electricity was available from the beginning of time, but we only found it in, um, you know, in the last couple of decades, I mean, uh, centuries. And it's the same with uh, autism. There is an answer. We just got to keep looking till we find it. Greg Poss, thank you very much. And thank you. we will run this clip that you've uh, been so gracious to get and understand you're an email pal of Oprah Winfrey. And she's actually invited right. you to be there with her right. in Birmingham. And that's exciting. So if anybody wants to go, it's going to be June 28th, 29th, and 30th. Uh, her, of 2007. That, right. It's going to actually air on her show that following Monday. Um, just come to Birmingham, you know, come with your ears open and your eyes ready to listen. because And your pocketbook be, ready. Right. Too, so it, we got to get that 200000 so going we to can be, get. It's going to be a great time with Oprah, you know. And uh, if you, I encourage you to check out the National Autism website at NSA.org or NationalAutisticSociety.org. There's a lot of great information on there. You can also order magnets and pins and various things that will help them with their funding of autism. Great pause. And autism, his passion for autism. I'm Bonnie Libhart. What is it that Oprah wants to do? She wants to get government funding to, or government approval to be able to take these children, take about five children in this lab and monitor them while they're sleeping and see what they're thinking with their brain, as well as when they're normal day-to-day -day activities to see what's going on with their, you know, with their brain and see what the difference is and take a normal child and do the same thing with a normal child and find out what the difference between the two are. And hopefully that can narrow down if it's something in the brain or if it's something genetic or, you know, what the makeup is, why those children have autism. But you wouldn't think it's genetic if there are other family siblings that are right. perfectly normal. Now, Matthew, the one in Pennsylvania that's kind of a relative of ours almost, oh, he is brilliant. He is a very brilliant young man. He just can't, con as Tony said, he can't convey that. They're very intelligent children. Um, mm -hmm. Some of Rain the, Man, you yeah, know, some of, some knew of the, how many uh, matches there were. Exactly. In some of the some of the children that I've seen that have autism are, very, are some of the best artists I've ever saw in my life, or some of the best writers, or you know that they, they write. Their writing is sloppy, but you can, if you if you know what they're saying, you can read it. Um, just the things that they do. They can take, like, Lego sets and just build amazing things with these Legos or take Play-Doh and create all different kinds of animals and characters with this Play-Doh. But, you know, they're, again, they're very intelligent children, but it's they're just not normal in the sense that they don't get to live the everyday, today life that we do. Well, the one, was that in Ring Man or was it a different show? I'm not sure. But the three-year-old drew that, mm -hmm. uh, the whole... Uh, system of mm -hmm. the plumbing. Right. Remember that? Underneath. Right. Oh, the, what, was that Rain Man? No? Different show. Okay. I'm glad somebody's <laughs> monitoring me to tell me that. Rain Man, they, he they counted the matches. The, yeah. You know, everything with right. the matches. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope that something can be done, and I sure appreciate you. And I'm proud that your parents raised you to be like you are. Right. So that's good, good raising, you know. Do you have any uh, siblings? I have three brothers and one sister. Um, really? I have two brothers that live in Florida, one brother that lives in Athens, and then my sister lives here in Huntsville. Mm -hmm. So what do they think about their brothers running around with Oprah? Well, they they get mad because they say, I never have time for them. I never get a chance to come to <laughs> but Florida. But you have time for Oprah. But yeah, they're <laughs> like, you have time to go to Chicago, to Harpo Studios. You have time to go to Birmingham with Oprah. It's like, of course, she's a celebrity. You know, why not? <laughs> so, And I said, you know, she's, she's funding something that I, I'm passionate about. So, you know, why not go in and be with her? And Oprah is a, she's one of my dear friends. She is an awesome lady. And, you know, there's not many people that care as much as Oprah Winfrey. Mm -hmm. That's true. So. Greg Poss, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.